are now joined by the head coach of the Hedgesville Eagles, Coach Kelly Church. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing well, Coach. Your team coming off of a good win over St. James the other night. We were there in attendance. And uh, just overall, how do you feel about the early part of the season and what did you take away from that win? Well, you know, again, like I might not, not to be the dead horse, but we we talk about it all the time. Like our, our goal is to be better at the end of the day, you know, today than we were before the day started. So, uh, you know, I think we've we've made progress in a, a number of areas. We've we've also, you know, we still obviously have lots and lots of things to work on, but <clears throat> you know, we're, we're getting better defensively, uh, trying to take teams out of what they want to do. Um, the kids are following game plans really, really well. Uh, and again, like uh, a long time ago, I heard Coach Price talking on the radio from Musselman, the football coach, and I have a lot of respect for all the stuff he was able to do. And some years they had lots of athletes, and some years they didn't have nearly as many. And, you know, uh, somebody was asking about his, you know, the, the defensive backs, something that happened during the game. And he said, you know, have you guys improved on your techniques? And he said, hold on a second, man. The kids have great techniques. Sometimes if, if, if you know, somebody runs a, a 4 4 40 and someone runs a 4 8 40, they're not going to be able to keep up. And so what we've tried to express to our kids is, like, you know, we are who we are. We're going to be who we're going to be. And so no matter what, let's work at being the best version of, of individually as you can be of yourself. But more importantly, let's be the best version of ourselves that we can be and have five guys trying to play together all the time. And so we really think we're, 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 we're you know, we're, we think we're getting the most out of our guys. And we also believe that our kids are doing a phenomenal job of trusting in us and trying to play together. Coach Church, Colin here. Congratulations on that win over St. James. Watching that game, something that really stood out to me, especially in the second half, was not only the selflessness during it, but the tremendous ball movement just really spreading out at defense so that you guys could get the easy baskets. Just talk to us a little bit about uh, your team and that aspect of the game. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> there's been lots of years here, like in, in the past, there's, there's, you know, we certainly have, have had teams where we have more depth. Other years we have less depth. You know, the last couple of years we've been, you know, pretty athletic and, and we've, we've gotten up and down a bit. And, uh, the, uh, you know, we, we really pride ourselves this year on we're going to have to be disciplined and understand what's a, what's a good shot for, for Tay Wilmer might not, might not be a good shot for, for Noah Brown. And so, we need to all understand what we do well, what our roles are going to be, and make sure we star in our role. And so, um, you know, in terms of, of sharing the ball, it's like, you know, most, most again, like everybody talks about, okay, well, the shot clock. The reality of the shot clock is that it's rarely needed in high school sports, in high school basketball. The, the, the schools, that, the, the states that don't have the shot clock score more points than the states that do have the shot clock. What happens is lots of people want to play really, really fast. Um, and and the you know the other the flip side of that is sometimes you play faster than you're capable of playing and and the only thing that happens is you get more bad shots and so we don't tell our kids you can't shoot we don't tell our kids you know you're, you're only allowed to shoot this shot or that shot we we really want them to understand what do they do well and make sure you do what you're capable of doing and in doing so. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to be willing to pass up what's an okay shot for a much better shot. And so, again, our willingness to share the ball and have five people play as one, we think, gives us a chance. Uh, you know, and as soon as we start just playing one-on-one basketball, it's, you know, sometimes if you're talented enough, you can do that. Uh, we think if we play one-on-one basketball, it's going to be a long year. So our kids have bought in. And, uh, you know, no matter what, we, we also talk here all the time about, you know, it's it's, it's about the experience and, and the other things you learn besides basketball. Basketball. I mean, we practiced this morning. Every kid had to be in our building before 5.30 a.m., um, you know, and uh, everybody was here. Everybody was here. Everybody was upbeat, energetic at practice. We started at 5.45. When you're starting practice at 5.45 in the morning and the kids are willing to be there and not only be there but have a good attitude, I mean, that's that, that, we don't do it all the time. We do it every once in a while. But that, that's certainly going to carry them, you know, uh, a lot further in life than, than whether or not we win or lose every game. Coach, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on the show today was to talk about the development of some of your key contributors this year. And I think the guy that stands out, even from game one to now, is Quincy Pitsnoggle, um, a guy that obviously, you know, he has the name, right? But uh, I, we've seen his development. We've seen him really become a great scorer for you guys and do 
things on both ends of the floor. What have you seen from Quincy uh, that has allowed him to get to this point now where he's contributing at such a high rate on the varsity level? Well, you know, it's one of those things. When you're a really, really tall kid, one of the things that happens is, uh, you know, there's, there's the awkwardness. And when I say the awkwardness, awkwardness of being taller than everyone, the awkwardness athletically of, of you know, when people talk about growing into your body and just – being comfortable, not only just with who you are, but in how you move and everything else. Quincy's always been a fairly skilled kid. Um, you know, he's, he's not the, he's not the thickest kid. And so sometimes that makes it awkward, especially when you're playing against sometimes smaller kids. Um, you know, but, uh, the, the biggest thing that's helped Quincy is, 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 is willingness to no matter what be coachable, uh, and, and understand that, um, you know, my, my son asked Alex, you know, was in town and he, he talked to Quincy and we think it helped a lot. Like, you know, Alex, Alex was really honest with him and he asked him some questions and some of them, you know, Quincy at first tried to give the answer that, you know, he thought that coach church would want to hear because this discussion happened in front of the team and he said, you know, Quincy, did you enjoy, you know, this part of your freshman year, no, I didn't. Well, what, what about, what about your junior year last year? Did you really enjoy varsity basketball? And Quincy said, I mean, like I enjoyed being on the team. I enjoyed being with the guys, but I didn't always enjoy practice. I mean, sometimes it wasn't very much fun and blah, blah, blah. And anyway, the short of it is Alex said, you know, okay, Quincy, well, you know, it's your senior year and the first game didn't go exactly like you wanted, you know? And he said, did it? And Quincy said, no. And Alex said, okay, well, well, what's going to change? Because you know they're not. And he pointed it at, at you know myself because Trish, Trish were asked. He pointed it at all all the coaches. He said, "Man, they're not changing. They are who they are, and they're going to coach the way they coach." So what you have to understand is you can you can embrace what they're trying to tell you and really, really, really try to listen to what they're saying and do the best you can to do that. And and if you do that. Then, then maybe you'll feel much different about things. And, and so, you know, although it was just one little talk, and do I think one little talk changed everything? I don't. But one of the other things he said to Quincy is, man, they have such high expectations for you. And sometimes it's hard to meet everybody else's expectations. But I promise you, the only thing Dad really cares about is that you're the best Quincy you can be. And if, if you believe in yourself as much as he believes in you, then you'll be okay. The problem right now, Quincy, is that when he when he gets on you and when he pushes you, sometimes that bothers Quincy, like it does all kids. And so Alex pointed out to him that, that Quincy, you have to understand if he didn't truly believe in you, he wouldn't push you to do the things he's asking you to do. And so, uh, you know, uh, my relationship with Quincy has always been really, really good. You know, we, everybody's hard on him because, you know, he is – tall and he is you know everybody had oh you're tall just do this just do that once you know sometimes it's not easy being a kid who's who's that much taller than everybody else so uh you know he's he's done extra workouts with coach triggs uh you know we, we we've all talked to him and stuff and the biggest thing is quincy believing in quincy and, you know as long as we can keep that happening we think uh, a lot of positive things can happen and then again like in our area like oh but is how good is he how good like what I tell people is this, uh, he, he's already 6'9", right? And, and he's a fairly skilled kid who can shoot, you know, and, and learning what's a good three and what's a bad three, all those things will happen. But, you know, it's not, well, is Quincy going to be a Division One basketball player? Well, he might not be a Division One basketball player next year, right? But what happens is if Quincy preps and then Quincy redshirts, three years from now, he's probably going to look a little bit different body-wise. And so what happens is now it's three years from now and you have a 6'9 kid who's also stronger, uh, you know, more confident and everything else. So his future is really, really bright, regardless of, of what happens this year, um, you know, and, and couldn't be any more pleased with his, his, you know, he's really seems to, especially after the last few weeks, really bought into, I'm going to listen and try to do what they tell me to do and be the best Quincy I can be. Somebody else that we've noticed take a big step at this level, Xavier Kirk, a guy that is an incredible athlete at the school, decided just to solely focus on basketball. Just talk a little bit about how much growth that you've seen from him as well. Well, he's always been a talented kid. Uh, you know, uh, understanding the, the, you know, the, I mean, there's no other way to say it. The intensity of what we do at basketball is it's, it's, it's not easy and buying into that intensity and, and, you know, it, it roles change, uh, you know, uh, obviously like, Oh, well, my, how come he didn't play more last year? Well, Cam Wilkes is pretty good. I mean, you know, we had some kids in front of him that made it difficult for him to play. And so, yeah, but, but, 
wasn't wasn't he better? It's one of the other things that people just don't seem to understand. Like sometimes you can point like, okay, well, well, kid A isn't he a little bit better than kid B? And kid B maybe played a little bit more last year. Well, kid B might be way way better at what kid B did. Uh, you know, I, I I do it with the parents at our parent meeting all the time, and I, I, I you know I tell them to name their four favorite quarterbacks of all time, any 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 you know of any year, any generation, and they name four quarterbacks. And I said, okay, if you're an NFL football team, what two are you cutting? I mean, you're not going to have four quarterbacks, and so having kids that are willing to buy in and do different things. And so Xavier, for us this year, I mean, obviously this is the role he's more comfortable in. Uh, but his, his, the thing that really, really makes me happy is uh, he wasn't necessarily a very vocal leader in the past, whether it was because he was younger, because uh, there were older kids, uh, some, some younger kids just, you know, do it naturally. But, but, you know, he's, he's only a junior and, and he is, uh, you know, he's very vocal at practice. He's vocal at games. He does a great job in terms of leading the other kids, not only with his, with, you know, with his work ethic and, you know, he and he and Tay and Noah, I mean, Quincy worked out a lot, but, but, you know, Tay, Noah and Quincy, I mean, Tay, Noah and X, they, they, they've spent countless hours trying to make themselves better at basketball. And so, you know, they work as hard as you can. And now it's just time for him to play. And he's doing a great job. He's, you know, obviously Sony can score the basketball. Uh, he's done a tremendous job on the defensive end as well. And, you know, just really, really proud of, of, you know, uh, where he's at at this point. And again, he's got, you know, this year and next. So. Coach, what do you think it is about your program that allows it to continue? Like you said, you know, lost a ton from last year. You had a lot of great kids, but these guys seem to have come in and, and stepped up and, and really just continued the success of Hedgesville basketball. Even though it is very early in the season, I know you still have a lot of things that you want to achieve, but it, it seems like year after year, no matter what the group is, um, your team finds a way to be competitive and, and be one of the toughest teams in the area. Well, it's one of those things. One, I'm, I'm not naive that the, you know, like, like who, who we've played compared to who we have to play. Uh, if you'd have watched us game one, there's no way you thought we ever would have beaten the St. James team we beat, you know, the other night. Uh, and I'm, I'm not saying St. James is the greatest team in the world, but I think they're extremely well coached. They, they do have a few really, really talented players. And, you know, we were able to make it difficult for them to score. Um, you know, and so like part of it is, uh, you know, kids' willingness to to do what you ask them to do. Uh, obviously, I, I, my my staff is, you know, Coach Rest does a ton of of scouting and and breakdown stuff, and now we have uh, Coach Triggs with us as well. And and you know, so having those two guys on staff that are that are you know both Ben could have Chris could have been a head coach numerous times, and Kyle with all of his experiences, and then our younger guys, our younger coaches, willing to do you know anything and everything that we ask them to do in terms of trying to learn stuff and teach the kids. But but really, we talk here all the time about culture, and it's a catchphrase, and everybody talks about, you know, well, culture counts and all that stuff. But but really, we, we do. Like, we, 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 we talk to every kid on every team about saying please and thank you and saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir. And, and you know, uh, greeting your teacher every day when you walk in the classroom and saying goodbye every day when you leave. And none of our kids are perfect. I'm not that guy. And our kids make, make mistakes, just like our coaches do none of us are perfect and but we really do try to teach them how to be good people and and also we try to show them abundantly how much we care about them regardless of if we win or lose a basketball game when we're at basketball practice it needs to be the most intense work hard bust your butt time of your day and after that uh, you know, we go back to being normal people and enjoying ourselves and everything else. Like we give our kids, I just grabbed it off my desk. Uh, uh, this is from 515 or 525. This morning we start five minutes before the practice time starts. Uh, practice emphasis, don't work today, it's a gift. Uh, quote of the day, talk loud and early. Question of the day, who is our best communicator? So, like, all those things matter. And they matter at basketball but they matter a whole lot more about life. And in today's world, if you show kids that you really care about who they are as people, as young men, hopefully one day, like, uh, you know, like you said, like, I, I don't, we don't know how the rest of the season is going to pan out, but, but, you know, uh, I'd like to think that not only is Xavier Kirk who this morning, because his mom had to go to work and everything else, his, his little sister was here with him at, at five fifteen in the morning. So we got little Davida running around the gym with us in the morning. And so, 
uh, you know, that kind of dedication by him and his family to make sure that things can happen. And, um, you know, we, we go out of our way to, to help take care of the kids, uh, not not just at basketball. And we, we want them to be good fathers, good people in the community, uh, you know, good husbands. That matters a lot more than whether or not we win basketball games. And then along the way, we've been fortunate enough to win some basketball games so people are willing to continue to buy in and, and do what we ask them to do. All right, Coach Church, before we let you go, Earlier this week uh, came out that it looks like a few other sports in the next school calendar year will be going to the 4A classification system like basketball has since 2020. So sports like football, baseball, I believe, as well, and softball will have that 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A now along with basketball remaining in that situation. Since you've had that system for the past few years, just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Has it really changed anything at all in your mind when you guys really came three years ago to it, or has it not really been much of a difference? Well, I mean, around here, it's not nearly as much of a difference because everybody's 4A, so it doesn't change that much in terms of our sections or our regions. I mean, I, I, I you know, basketball-wise, one of the neat things that happened is there, there's there's some schools that got to go to the state tournament that, that haven't been to the state tournament in forever, and and now with the divisional change being, you know, 3A or 2A or whatever, some of them were able to go. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the whole... <laughs> We're trying to create more opportunities for teams to be able to experience, you know, you can say you're a champion. And um, uh, b- believe me, the, the, the year we won, okay, so our, our only, since I've been here, our only state championship in boys basketball, uh, we were, okay, two teams get to go to the state tournament. No, uh, but when when only one team went to the state tournament, my gosh, it was it was it was so hard to get there. It seemed to mean so much more, and so you know, the more you end up like Virginia, uh, you know, I used to live and coach in Virginia a long, long time ago. But they're up to they're up to six A in different divisions within the six categories, and so what we do is we do this: is it is it to create more opportunities? Is it to make more money? Uh, you know, but I just sometimes I worry about how much are we going to, you know, dilute the pool. Um, you know, I, I everybody, you know, it's, everybody wants a, everybody wants the trophy, everybody wants the medal, and so I, I get that. But uh, sometimes, you know, you make it a little bit harder to achieve it. It matters more when you get it. But so I mean, it's been I, I haven't noticed that much of a difference, especially for us. I know, uh, you know, I just saw the list. I just looked at it actually with Miss Van Dyne a little while ago this morning. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much it will affect other sports. Uh, I know that if you're a coach of another team that is, a, you know, like a, it, it, some schools, it's a struggle to get to the state tournament ever in, in boys or girls basketball. And, and creating that opportunity for, for children, I think, is, you know, it's great. You just have to watch and make sure that we don't water it down too much. Coach, thank you so much for the time, as always, and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. I hope everybody has a happy holiday and, um, you know, and a safe one as well. I'll you see too. you guys uh, beginning of next year. Thank you very much. That was Coach Kelly Church of Hedgesville.